interesting in the careers of energy system technology, chemical engineering, which is in the same field as Susan, communication and media engineering. At the moment, he is dean of the bachelor degree programs and head of the famous Institute of Continuing Academic Education, Wissenschaftliche Weiterbildung, the same approach which we reflect here, education, learning. Yeah. Doher published several books, books, chapters, and a lot of articles, and he's certified as a so-called European geologist. I'm very happy that you are here. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's hard for me to continue after two fantastic presentations, even in a foreign language. And so please uh, accept that I read a little more than I speak in, uh, and talk to you in a free speech. But uh, I think this uh, theme, uh, the topic, Alexander von Humboldt, is so int interesting, in, uh, even for the web application, the question of interconnectedness of data, knowledge, networking, network, uh, society, information, and uh, classification of data, that it is uh, worth to think about that, what uh, this uh, famous German uh, published uh, 200 years ago, and you will be astonished about that, what we could uh, learn, uh, what lesson we could learn about that, what uh, he published already. So I thank you very much for this opportunity to be here in Orlando, and. Uh, uh, to give my presentation about this uh, German uh, traveler. He self uh, explained he was not an explorer, but a traveler, and I will explain to you what the reason is behind that. Well, in the era of Google Books, of course, uh, why do we need a web portal as an adequate service to provide a legacy of an, a traveler and a scientist? You know, Google Earth is presenting everything you uh, need and you want to find on the web. And so this question, of course, came up. And what is exactly so important for us to recognize uh, what uh, even uh, scientists 200 years ago uh, published and uh, had a vision about the nature and uh, the human beings? Well, in my presentation, I tried to give you an educated answer. And uh, I'm very uh, happy about that, that uh, we have an interdisciplinary forum here uh, because uh, this is really an interdisciplinary theme. We are talking about that. So at the very start of this project, uh, we started in 2001 exactly with the question, how could we uh, do justice to the legacy of Alexander von Humboldt? And the first partnership uh, 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 was uh, between the Kansas, the University of Kansas, and my uh, university at Offenburg with my IT team. And uh, we thought about uh, what could we do to publish those uh, books from Alexander von Humboldt first in the digital library. And uh, we found it is not enough to do that. And this is exactly the, the main uh, important message I want to give you today. Well, OK, uh, so uh, let me introduce, uh, oops, it switched a little bit. Yeah, okay. Well, let me introduce the man Alexander von Humboldt. He is a German scientist and explorer from the 19th century, and he viewed the natural world holistically, even in his time, and described the harmony of nature among the diversity of the physical world as a conjoining, conjoining between all physical disciplines. After his travels to the Americas, uh, he was uh, admired for his uh, ability to see the natural world and the human nature uh, in the context of a complex network of relationships and involved all known scientific and uh, humanistic uh, disciplines. So especially Thomas Jefferson was delighted to have Humboldt as a guest in the White House and the two uh, held numerous intensive uh, discussions on the uh, scientific matters. Well, who was this man uh, who published a lot of uh, his uh, visions and uh, who uh, gave uh, a lot of uh, explanations about the processes and uh, the species he found during his travel? He was born in uh, uh, 1769 in Germany as the younger brother of the Prussian minister Wilhelm von Humboldt. He was the brother of Wilhelm von Humboldt. And uh, he enrolled at the University of Göttingen, uh, 
uh, in uh, geology, and his passion for travel was confined, confirmed by a friendship formed at Göttingen with Georg Forster. Georg Forster was the companion of uh, Captain James Cook on the Cook's second voyage. After a time in Freiburg, Saxony, he obtained officially employment as assessor of mines uh, in uh, uh, Saxony, Freiburg, and uh, he, uh, after his travels, when he came back to Europe, uh, he finally settled in Paris, 1808, with the purpose of bringing his great work uh, through the press. This colossal task, which he had first hoped would occupy but two years, eventually cost him 21. And uh, then, <laughs> even that is remained incomplete. Okay, in 1857, Humboldt suffered a minor stroke, and after his strength began to decline, he died two years later in Berlin at the age of 89. Well, now everybody can have access to those documents, as I uh, 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 discussed with you before, which are now not uh, only important for the historical point of view, but also as an ex excellent example of uh, interconnected information. Okay, uh, you see here a little chart about uh, the travels from Alexander von Humboldt. I do not want to go deeper into that, but you see here the main uh, route, the travel route from Humboldt. He started at La Coruña in Spain, and uh, he was armed with powerful recommendations of the uh, King of Spain, and together with his friend Aimé Bonplan, he, they started their travel to the Americas and stopped uh, 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 on the island of um, uh, Tenerife uh, to climb the volcanoes Teide and landed last at Cumana, Venezuela. Okay, so, so in 1800, Humboldt left the coast with the purpose of exploring the Orinoco River. This was the famous part of his uh, travel. In a world in largely in an uninhabited country, found the Kazikiari Channel, which links the water system between the rivers Orinoco and uh, the Amazon River. Then he sailed to Cuba, and uh, later on uh, he uh, reached uh, Quito, Ecuador, uh, after a difficult journey, and then he climbed up the volcanoes, Pichincha and attempted to Chimborazo, uh, which was believed as the highest mountain on earth during that time, but he never made it to the top. But he reached uh, an astonishing altitude of nearly 19,000 feet, which was uh, something like a world record at this time. Okay, Humboldt made a short visit to the United States, staying a few days in the White House as a guest of President Thomas Jefferson. After six days, uh, six weeks, then Humboldt set sail back to Europe, and uh, then you see landed in Bordeaux. Okay, so uh, this was something about his travel, and now I want to explain something about Humboldt's idea of nature, because this exactly is uh, what we thought about uh, is uh, uh, worth to present in the adequate form uh, on internet. Well, he saw the need for an approach to science that could account for the harmony of nature and among the diversity of the physical world known during his time. For him, it was the interrelation of all, all physical disciplines, such as the conjoining between biology, meteorology, geology, and uh, that to determine where specific, where specific plants grew. This was, uh, he found uh, on his way up to the top of uh, the volcanoes. He found those relationships by unraveling all data he collected during his travels, and uh, he uh, described them precisely. Because of his descriptions, uh, you see here, he saw the need to record everything with uh, precision to detect the process behind. Uh, he believed that the quantification and subdivision were destined at uh, some point to re reveal fundamental unit uh, unity. With extension intensive observations and analyses uh, written down after his travels, he published and illustrated 40 volumes uh, relating to his travels to the Americas, but due to his passion for collecting and labeling plants, shells, and eye insects, Humboldt received the playful title of the little apothecary. This exactly uh, describes his passion for describing in detail. 
Well, the holistic vision of uh, Humboldt is the idea that national uh, systems and their properties should be reviewed as wholes, not as collection of his parts. And Humboldt, in fact, viewed nature, nature holistically and tried to explain natural phenomena without any appeal of r religious dogma. He believed in the central importance of his observations and the measurements made by the most sophisticated scientific instruments then available because of the importance of the collected data, and which was the basic of all scientific understanding. Biographers often place Alexander von Humboldt its name next to Goethe's. Uh, a friendship and mutual respect existed between these two German uh, uh, intellectuals, and they shared many interests in literature and science, both articulated holistic views of nature. In the preface of the Cosmos, a uh, five-volume uh, document from Humboldt, Humboldt wrote, the principal impulse by which I was directed was the earnest endeavor to comprehend the phenomena of physical objects in their general connection and to represent nature as one great whole moved and animated by internal forces. Okay, the interdisciplinarity is one of the most uh, interesting part in the volumes of Humboldt because after his travels to the Americas, he was admired for his ability to see the natural world and human nature in the context of a complex network of relationships that involved all known scientific and humanistic disciplines. He generated advance in, different, uh, in diverse disciplines such as anthropology, his history, archaeology, sociology, botany, geography, geology, astronomy, and ecology. So uh, this is an important uh, role of this uh, Humboldt work. After his five-volume uh, work, Cosmos, attempted to unify the various branches of uh, scientific knowledge, he tried to explain the unity of all those uh, disciplines in detail. Okay, time and space. Furthermore, Humboldt saw all phenomena of the context of a historical development. For him, the historical perspective was an active dimension on the web of interconnectedness. Well, this sounds uh, recent, I think. And uh, this is uh, uh, the reason of uh, Humboldt. He saw the nature existing in space and time. The documents provide the basis for reconstructing the five-year journey in a strictly chronological sequence uh, is uh, some uh, or contain, are containing some mistakes because uh, Humboldt uh, often strays from the district, uh, from a strict chronological order because he write a diary and uh, he uh, made a lot of notice and uh, there um, after he after his return to Europe he conducted research and often inserted discourses or articles of various length in his diary. And so it is nearly unreadable when you look for this chronological order. And in fact, the personal narrative, it was one of his uh, main documents, breaks off at the beginning of the Columbia journey. So you have to switch from document to document to follow the chronological order in detail. Okay, interconnectedness. This is something about internet, I think. And uh, so Humboldt had the strong conviction that the distinct disciplines represented artificial divisions of knowledge. And the key to understanding nature was interconnectedness. During his South America travels, Humboldt noted in his diary, alles ist Wechselwirkung. Well, uh, it is uh, uh, translated, everything is interconnected and interdependent. As a result, published a detailed narrative of his travels, constantly integrating his observations and data from various perspectives and disciplines. The need to make connections was characteristic of his publications. Okay, unity. Humboldt suggested that it would be possible to show the features of the tropics and uh, the gradual changes up to the snow-capped mountains in nature, which he documented in the famous graphic image of the Mount Chimborazo, a volcano, 
which shows plants at several altitude levels, together with data tables on both sides of the cross section. Well, there one can find measurement of altitude, air pressure, comparison of, with other mountains, and much more details, and the cross section itself is filled up with plant names he found in Latin names, regions of plant occurrences and regimes. Well, you see, in America, in the year 2014, the American Society presents the unity of nature, Alexander von Humboldt in the Americas, and uh, the eminent uh, Harvard paleontologist uh, Stephen J. Gold said he was probably the most, the world's most famous and influential intellectual of the early 19th century, of course. Okay, the next uh, topic for the internet. You see here hypertextuality. The Humboldt's desire for an all encompassing, all facts considering view of the world influenced, of course, his writing. The consideration of details is done in a myriad of notes and cross references. Humboldt's always spent a network of text, a network of text, and subtexts, pictures to animate the nature, in, imitate the nature itself just because he recognized the structure in every relation between plants and animals. Later, the science, scientists, uh, the community said it's something like a Humboldtian science he founded. And uh, this impact to natural science uh, uh, can be described as uh, the following uh, list. Uh, because of his profound grasp of a broad spectrum of knowledge and his insistence on precision, Humboldt was in, un in a unique position to advance the natural sciences and uh, in the first half of, his, of the 19th century. The main feature of Humboldt's in pioneering work was described as a great new event in professional science and was named as the Humboldtian science. This was a synonym for the accurate, measured study of widespread but interconnected real phenomena in order to find the definite law in a dynamic course. Well, Alexander von Humboldt uh, was careful not to call himself an explorer because uh, he was a scientific traveler, because uh, he measured accurately that explorers only had reported inaccurately and uh, so himself uh, called him a traveler. Well, maybe you know this uh, famous image about the plant geography. This is uh, some output of our website, because this image from Humboldt is uh, nearly unreadable, even by naked eye. And so we thought about how to present that in an adequate uh, form on the internet. Uh, by the way, this is open access for everybody. I will give you this uh, URL a little later. So Humboldt founded the branch of the biogeography uh, that is concerned with the geographic distribution of plant species and their influences on the Earth's surface, while his essay on the geography of plants was based on the novel idea of studying the distribution of organic life as affected by varying physical condition. And you see here this Chimborazo image uh, in this uh, proper form. You see here on this... Uh, uh, image some plant names. Those plant names are colored. You see regions of those uh, plants. You see uh, the Latin names of uh, plants. And you see here uh, on the other side the uh, left table, the marker, and uh, some plants on the other side because you need maybe a list of all those plants uh, described here in this uh, image. Of course, uh, this is uh, interactive, so you could click on this image and uh, go. I will show you that a little later. Maybe you look for the plant Lobelia, and you could click here on this image on the web, and you will see the description of Humboldt about this plant, and of course, his illustration about that. So let me shorten a little bit. Well, an impact to national sciences, of course, uh, is remarkable in the Darwin evolution theory. And you see here some uh, notice from Darwin from one of his letters in 1832. I formerly had my Humboldt. Now I almost adore him. 
And uh, this leads uh, to the question why, of course. Darwin used the descriptions, the precise descriptions of Humboldt just like a lexicon, like a, a Wikipedia, maybe. And uh, so he, he uh, had a precise definition of that, what Humboldt found. And uh, of course, this was uh, very helpful for developing this evolution theory. Well, this is my, my uh, uh, discipline. Humboldt had a um, big impact on natural science for the geosciences. Remember, Humboldt studied geology in Göttingen. And uh, of course, he was one of the first to propose that the lands bordering uh, the Atlantic Ocean that once joined South America and Africa in particular. Alfred Wegener developed this theory of continental drifting more than 100 years later, after Humboldt, and now today every geologist would comply, of course, uh, with the idea of plate tectonics. This is now not a question, but in the former days it was astonishing to uh, uh, see these visions. His services to, to geology were based mainly on his attentive study of the volcanoes of the New World. This was exactly uh, his interest, because there was an ongoing dispute about the origin of the rocks. Well, it uh, would take too long to go into detail, but uh, Humboldt showed that the volcanoes fell naturally into linear groups, presumably corresponding with vast subterranean fissures. This was the first time uh, that uh, somebody uh, described that in this way. And by his demonstration of the igneous origin of rocks precisely uh, previously had uh, to be of aquatic uh, formation, he contributed largely to the elimination of erroneous views, such the Neptunism, maybe you heard about this uh, uh, description. Okay, so the question about the impact uh, has to be completed. You see here Humboldt uh, drew isothermal charts, the view of clima climates and production drawn from the accounts of Alexander von Humboldt uh, a little later from uh, Woodbridge and his team. And you see here, this is not very precise, but it's the first isothermal chart. And of course, uh, this was used uh, uh, in later times for uh, this uh, development of this uh, disciplines. Again, a very modern concept is the concept of sustainability. You see here a little chart about and uh, the picture of landscape in the focus of scientific and humanistic studies showing gas volcanoes in Colombia. And you see here the source Alexander von Humboldt, 1810, view des Cordilleres in uh, one table. So Humboldt always saw his observations in correlation with national uh, phenomena and historical context as an interdependent. As a geoscientist, Humboldt envisioned the interactions between the biosphere and the inanimate nature as a dynamic process. With this context of observations and the historical dimension, Humboldt defined the basis of sustainability on sustainable development which plays an important role to our society today. Okay, accessibility of his work. Now you see uh, this is not the original work from Humboldt, but uh, this is uh, the result of 15-year uh, work in the project. You see here Humboldt's original publications about his uh, travels are now rare books, of course. Only a handful of libraries in the world have complete sets. And Humboldt himself invested a fortune to create extensive publications like folio volumes, frequently with uh, plates colored by hand, available to a wider public. So there are now a lot of online archives on internet available which are containing document scans and reprints of the Humboldt's volumes. Some are listed here in the Google list, and uh, because this is my first project about this Humboldt, uh, uh, I will uh, give you some more details about that. But you, of course, could see the internet address, this a, Alexander von Humboldt.net, and okay, maybe it is fair enough to say that the high interconnectivity of data led to this excellent Google ranking 
uh, because we don't accept ad advertisements or backlinking or other tools to improve this Google rank. And this is simple only the interconnection of the data in our so-called digital library. Okay, so uh, Humboldt complained about the price after his publications in the letter. This is so interesting. My books have not yielded the benefits that I imagined when I set about editing and publishing them. They are too expensive, he complained. Because the one copy which I own for my personal use, there are only two copies in Berlin of my American travel volumes. One of them is in the Royal Library and is complete. The second, the king has in his private library but is incomplete, because even for the king, the installments became too expensive. This was a letter from Humboldt. Okay, so of course, uh, this is the challenge for us all to uh, give uh, Humboldt work in digital libraries, and at the present time, the highly uh, form, the, the un unconventional form of, of his publications was under undermined the awareness and a comprehensive study of Humboldt's works. But uh, you see here a lot of digital libraries containing Humboldt documents. And the problem of that is, let me summarize that in the word, an internet edition must preserve the author's original intention, retain the, an awareness of all relevant works, and still adhere to the requirements of the scholarly edition. Well. When you reflect that, and you, when you, you reflect simply the PDF file or a document as a scan, you never could reach that in the digital library in this form, what this man had as the vision of interconnectedness uh, of nature. Well, we started with this project 50 years ago. There's a corporation, as I told you. But what's missing, what is missing today, frankly to say, is the overall data structure of internal and external data and the worldwide valid metadata information of those information objects. Because it has nothing to do with the text encoding initiative standards, maybe you know that, or should describe correlation methods and properties of information objects. We went a step forward with this information network on the Humboldt's legacy because it is a useful example to show the usability of an information network in comparison with the PDF file service of digital libraries? Well, a challenging question. If Humboldt had a laptop. Well, following Humboldt's idea of nature, an internet edition must, must preserve the author's original intention. New forms of interaction and synthesis between humanistic text and scientific observations need to be created. Finally, procedures are needed to extract, compare, and update Humboldt's data with information uh, from modern databases. With such a system, multiple connections would be available both between the parts of the corpus and also to documents from the scientific community, past and present. OK, status quo. What happened with this Humboldt Digital Library and uh, the portal? Well, you see here, the di digital library, of course, represents a system of, to access the legacy of this uh, uh, Alexander from Humboldt documents in the digital form, uh, like uh, a digital library you already know. And we are part of the Open Archive Initiative. We are content providers, so, so to say we obey the rules. But uh, the digital library isn't the digital library at all, because it is an information network. And uh, this reflects, of course, uh, uh, the achievements of the Humboldtian science as an accurate, <coughs> measured study of interconnected, real phenomena. But every time the same story. We expected to develop a system like that in a few years. But since 2001, we are still uh, working, and it's uh, remaining incomplete. Well, to give you a a little chance to see what, what we did is uh, here this information system, make a copy. And uh, you see here, uh, like a digital library, we usually provide uh, these documents on the basis of XML on PDF files, of course, as well. Whereas we defined as well the content as media assets in response of the text paragraphs. 
And exactly that is what you could read when you go to the internet. And you see here the list of visible documents. And as well, when you click on one of those bookshelves, you will get uh, the different volumes and you get the different uh, text ordered in uh, paragraphs, not uh, with only side uh, page-oriented system or document-oriented system. And uh, it would be take too much time to go deeper into this information technology, but of course you see there very complex uh, things like uh, digital formats, of course, repositories, metadata. The information system contains multilingual data because there are a lot of translation of the Humboldt texts are uh, existing in digital libraries, but they are different. The translations are different, and it is uh, one task to find out the uh, original uh, expression from Humboldt about that, what he published normally, by the way, in French. Okay, the search data, search methods are interesting because uh, when you are searching for a crocodile, where Humboldt described crocodiles, then you have the challenge, uh, maybe Humboldt described alligators. And how should the computer know that uh, it is a synonym for Humboldt, alligator and crocodile? And when he found a crocodile or when he described uh, an animal, uh, how should the computer know where it was? And are there still crocodiles? Those are exactly, exactly the challenging questions we try to answer with our search methods and the information retrieval modules. Well, there are a thousand things to say, but uh, I was reminded to uh, keep on the time. And so I want to give you another example of what we did. We switched from the Humboldt Digital <coughs> Library a few years ago to a complete Humboldt portal because we found it is not enough to have a library, but we wanted to link all the existing data together in one portal because you shouldn't uh, uh, search on internet, maybe on Google Books or whatever about Humboldt documents, but you should be able to search, for example, for this alligator. And you should, be, or sh you should have the chance to find documents or text paragraphs, not only for the crocodile, but for the alligator or any other animal or the Latin name Lobelia, for example, the plant name, and you maybe should find the recent name for this plant. I have no idea what it is, but uh, well, this should be an answer from the portal or the information system behind. And so you see here, I uh, click on that. Uh, this is, uh, of course, providing the link to suggested archives. Uh, we created an autocomplete list because we have all the words gathered in the catalog, no matter which uh, translation uh, we had. We have uh, an analysis of this data respected to the results. Oh, sorry. No, it's my computer. Here you see the analysis. You see here we link, for example, for this uh, keyword, uh, we have one hit. This is the Deutsche Text Archive by the XML documents which we integrate in our archive. And you see here the analysis when you insert here in the search uh, field Mars, for example, Mars Bahn, Mars Scheibe, or whatever expression, you get uh, this from this uh, autocomplete list first. And secondly, you get this information Mars is detected in the Deutsch text archive as a substring one time and Mars as a whole term uh, another time. So we could be sure then you have in this document one uh, um, um, uh, evidence for this Mars. And when you type in more Mars Bahn, for example, you will get another list. So this is an interactive search in external archives. Remember what I said, an interactive search in external archives. Of course, there are a lot of misspellings because those texts are coming from uh, automatic text recognition and you never could be sure of uh, if Mars is really uh, uh, spelled correctly with an, an M at the beginning, for example, instead of an N or whatever uh, character. And so uh, this is what you could find then in uh, this autocomplete list. The other thing is the detection of other misspellings. You see here Mars then, Mars tone. This could happen because of this automatic text recognition. 
Okay, the vision. Well, the Humboldt Digital Library can integrate all published documents and connect online archives together. It is a portal, and uh, the, li the links inside the portal are pointing, of course, to this uh, document. The Humboldt Digital Library is a prototype of a new interactive digital library, which can adequately present, represent the Humboldt in science on the web, and can establish worldwide interactive networking. So you've got it. The Humboldt Digital Library is only the prototype, in my opinion, for the next generation of the digital library, and this has something to do with the, the step to the semantic web and the uh, applications of that, what we called knowledge and information technology. Thank you so much.